I got exciting news, you guys. I just learned how to run the sprayer, which means you get to come along with me now. Let's go. So Jeremy thought it'd be a good idea for me to know how to run this just in case a situation came up where I had to do some spraying. And since we're spraying fungicide right now, I can't really hurt anything. If I accidentally get some of this on some corn or some grass in the waterway or a neighbor's crop or something, it's not gonna hurt anything. This isn't gonna kill any weeds, kill any plants. This is just to protect the beans from any late season diseases or fungal infections or anything that might show up and rob us of precious yield. Bushels per acre we're trying to save by putting this fungicide down. So I really can't screw up unless I break the sprayer, I guess I could screw up but I can't hurt any plants. So this is why I'm learning how to spray right now. All right, let's make it happen. One of the crazy things about spraying is the visibility is just not great in this cab when you have the boom folded up. So if you ever see a sprayer getting ready to pull out of a driveway and you're going down the road, I would just be careful and assume that they can't see you. So look at this, I'm getting ready to pull out onto the road and this is what I can see looking both directions. So you kind of got to look up and through there and down through there and just really make sure nobody's coming before you pull out. All right, we've made it safely to the field. So now we got to get this big boom folded out. So I hit this switch right here and that raises the whole thing up. It's got like a cradle on the side of the sprayer that the boom sits in. Raise it all the way up. And there's a button to hold down on the floor and you hold both of these, or no, you hold them down. And then that swings both of the wings out at the same time. And then once they're all the way out, then you let your foot off the button, push it down again, and then push the switches down the same way. And it folds the last section of the wing out once this whole thing is folded out now we are 90 feet long and now we lower it down till it's about we're running 24 to 30 inches off the top of the beans I want to make sure the boom is level these individual wing switches you can actually raise the wing up or down because if you think about it, this thing is 90 feet long. So if you get into a little bit of a dip where the sprayer tips to the right, if you didn't have that capability, that right wing would actually dip down and hit the ground. So to keep it level and off the crop, we've got switches to individually control one side or the other and tip it up or down. So making sure it's level and good to go. The pump is already running. I had that running when I filled the sprayer got it on recirculate right now get our make sure our tank volume is uh, set to 800 all right the map is good to go the boom is good to go we're ready to spray So we just sprayed up these end rows and now I got turned around and squared up to go that way. We got to make sure of course that we're not going to hit any trees over there with our boom. So you want to get started on the right row so that while you're spraying along you don't accidentally get out into the trees. And then if you look at the map here you notice that I've already sprayed into where my boom is already. So what I can do is I've got these switches on the handle that I can shut off individual boom sections with. If you look on this controller right here, if I hit my left arrow switch, I'm shutting off boom sections. So I want to leave, I want to leave the left one and left two and the center section on. That'll work out pretty good. And then uh, when I get past there, I'll just hit the resume all button and they'll all come back on. We'll be good to go.
Well, I got my trusty sidekick with me. We just finished spraying the last of the fungicide on the beans, and now we're gonna try to find our flags out in this cornfield. It's only about eight feet tall. I don't know, you think we can find them? Maybe. Well, let's give it a try. All right, I think we've got a little trail in through here, so I'll keep following this trail. So here's a blue one. So that's a day two emerger. Second day we started checking, that guy came up. Here is a red flag. That means this was the fourth day. Look at the difference between these two plants. I see no brace roots at all on this one. Really nice, healthy, strong brace roots here. Follow this plant up. This is as tall as that plant is. The total height of this plant is where the ear is being set on the plants next to it. And they go all the way up to here. So this guy's not gonna make anything happen. And then over here, we got the same situation between a blue one and a yellow one. So there was only one day's difference in emergence here. Again, no brace roots. And this plant is gonna be a piece of junk. All right, I gotta show you how my little grazing experiment is going. I just moved the fence this morning. And as you can see, it almost looks like I mowed hay out here. They ate everything on the west side of this fence here. So then I moved them over this morning, so now they can get into this spot. They don't really realize it yet, but they'll eventually come down thinking that they're going into the same area and they'll notice that that fence is across there now, so they can't go down there anymore. And now the fence turns the corner into this lane. So I don't know exactly what's gonna happen when eventually the grass that they're going into is really tall. I still might have some of the same problem I had before, but we'll see, this is fun at least. Well, I've made it back to the PTI farm. I'm really excited to see the whole agronomy tour today. I missed half of it last year. We had to run off and do that live stream. I'm really excited to get to go on the whole tour this year. So let's see what we can learn. We've been kidnapped. Nobody knows what's happening. We're on a golf cart in Pontiac, Illinois. If you don't hear from me in an hour, send help. So here we are checking out a new app on the iPad that can actually map out the corn plants in the field tell you what stage of growth they're at and tell you if we had an emergence problem or if we have a spacing or a singulation issue in the corn that's already standing. This is pretty cool stuff. That's crazy. V3, V3. Mm -hmm. And it's getting, so as I'm walking, it's actually getting pretty far out ahead of me. Mm -hmm. And now he's gone, again, the complete opposite direction where he's got a very large droplet and we're still maintaining a nice spray pattern over here. So this is, uh, this is where all the cable information comes into, and then it's broadcasting that back to this antenna here. It is, so this is your weather station, so this is gonna measure temperature and humidity of the outside air. Because you wanted 15% moisture, it's not gonna run the fans if the air gets outside that window. If you were to run the fans that day, it's gonna either dry or re-wet the crop but it is going to look for when can I find a time when the moisture window is right and the temperature window is right because I want to cool that crop down. An automated system like this is only going to run your fans again when they actually are doing and achieving that desired objective. So much stuff happened already before lunch. The grain bin stuff, the sprayer session, planter maintenance, fertility. We talked about how to make the perfect furrow. Lots of really cool data was shared. And then we sat down for a nice lunch, chatted with our friends about what we had been doing all morning. And I was super fired up to get on the trolley and go out to the field for Jason Webster's agronomy tour. This farm, the PTI farm is 400 acres of research and he's actively working 125 different research plots right now. So much cool stuff going on. And I was honestly pretty fired up about their rainwater collection system with this pond where they're collecting all their rainwater through the tile and then using it to irrigate throughout the season. Really cool stuff they're doing here. Now look at the corn. Look how that corn's moving. The props are pushing that air down. Why would that be a good thing? Yeah, that, that spray application, we're just water right now, but think of that as a fungicide, getting that down into the canopy. You know with a fungicide, you get it on, on a plant, she only moves upward. And so if you only cover half the plant, the bottom half of the plant will not be protected whatsoever. What's the whole purpose of doing the strip cropping? Anybody know? 
sunlight. Catch the sunlight. Sunlight interception, yeah. We started doing this. Last year we measured the yield on the outside edges. We were getting a 60 bushel yield response. 60. In 16 row blocks, I'm running, you know, 220 bushel corn in the center of the 16 row blocks, and I'm pushing over 300 bushel on some of the outside rows in some, some cases. It was unbelievable. This year we came in and we said, let's go to the 15 foot blocks. So I've got 40 foot blocks, I've got 20 foot blocks, and this year for the first time, I've got 15 foot blocks. And I said, while we're doing 15 foot blocks, let's go 15 inch corn. How am I gonna harvest this? At home, when you put tile in, you have an outlet, it gets rid of the water and you never see it again, right? What do you suppose we do with our water? We hold it for dear life, and in June, a lot of a lot of June water in this year, July and August, we're irrigating our crops. We're pumping the water out of this pond. We're, we're irrigating through drip tape, and I, it allows me to take control. <laughs> I've got these ir uh, agronomic plots out here where I can't lose them because of variability. Too much water, too dry. I don't want to lose that data, so here we're just trying to regulate. While we're regulating, we can also feed the crop. And I will tell you, this has been amazing. Well, that was a whirlwind trip. I am back home now scouting corn, looking to see if we've got any disease pressure starting yet. We've got a neighbor spraying fungicide on our corn with his sprayer, because our sprayer is nowhere near tall enough to get over top of this corn. We've also got a field that's gonna get sprayed with a plane because the rows are going 30 different directions. It wouldn't be much fun to get in there with a sprayer on the ground and try to do it, especially if it's not your field and you've never been in it before. It would be a nightmare. My brain is just completely jammed full and all excited about all the things that we were talking about at the PTI farm. I can't wait till this fall when all the data comes out because I wanna see how some of those plots turned out that we were talking about while we were out there. If you wanna go to the PTI farm, all you gotta do is get on your computer, your phone, go to precisionplanting.com slash PTI and get yourself signed up. I know we've kind of been all over the place with this week's video, but that's just the way it is sometimes. There's a lot of different things going on. I appreciate you hanging out. Thanks for being here. I'll see you next time. Believing in better is a mindset to pursue excellence in everything you do. It's welcoming opportunities to improve your farm and knowing that your best season is simply a starting point for this season. Precision planting is for farmers like you who believe in better.